one. Woohoo! Okay, welcome to another session of our Women Lead Online forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Berquist, your host today, and what we're doing is we're having these great conversations that are relevant to not only women in business, but in such challenging times right now in business for all of us. So um, I'm excited because our session today is just under an hour, more if you want, less if we need to, and we're gonna be on video and we've got a subject matter smarty pants that's ready to come on board and share some great information with us. Our topic today, which I think this in the changing times we're at is so timely, and that's how to maintain, quote, flow, which we're going to find out what flow is during information overload. Because I don't know about all of you, but I sure know for me, I am on absolute information overload. And here we are on Zoom and I'm on Zoom fatigue as well. Because I think so many of us are in our homes because we're on shutdown, that we're all in our home office environments or homes. And it's just it's one crazy town. So I'm delighted to introduce Chris King, who is what? The founder of the Smarty Pants, the strategist of Chris King. Is it international or national? I don't know. Uh, Chris. Legally, Chris M. King, LLC with a DBA of status flow. Let's go with status flow. I like that. And I want to know what the heck is flow? Let's start with that. It's like, how can we and where are we going with this on how to maintain flow? Define okay. that, please. So great. Thank you for asking and thank you for having me. It really is an honor to be, able to be included. Um, so fl flow has been a term that's been around since the 70s. I'll give you a little bit of history. It, it actually dates back all the way to William James. It goes back before Freud. It goes back to uh, you know, all the founders of positive psychology and, and Abraham Maslow. Um, and, and really to, to Nietzsche even. So um, what, what you, you've heard of this term before just in, in different names. Every, every different uh, discipline seems to have a different name for it. You might have heard, heard of it referred to as runner's high or professional athletes call it being in the zone. Basketball players say it's, it's going unconscious. Um, Stand-up uh, comedians will call it forever box. Um, what flow is, it is, it is, a, it is defined as high, uh, near perfect um, high speed decision making. And in a flow state, it's actually a neurochemically dr uh, driven state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And when we can achieve that state of consciousness, we are about five times quicker than we normally are. We're getting done in a day what we normally get done in a week. Wow. We are seven times more creative. We are never stressed out, overwhelmed, burned out. That is all gone. And as it turns out, flow is trainable. And this is how um, it is through, uh, through a flow cycle that every gold medal in the Olympics has ever been won. It's the reason that extreme sports have had such exponential increases over the last three decades. Surfing, for example, is a great example because surfing was pretty much the same for decades until around the 90s. And then all of a sudden, things changed really quickly. And it was because of our understanding of this thing we call flow. And I, I, I'm familiar with the term in the zone, and I love that you said it's it's teachable and learnable. Like when I think everybody right now feels so, um, I don't know, like Tanya and Christine and Mandy, you're on this call and some others, and I'm looking at it and going, and Patty, I'm sorry. Um, when you see how distracted we are right now, and it's like we try to be, you know, focused on what we need to as far as importance, how does somebody get into the flow? Like, are there techniques that can happen or... Sure. Yes. I want the flow. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> actually, want the flow. You, you do want the flow. And I tell you, you've probably experienced this, um, you know, and that's a great question. Uh, if, if you remember, maybe, maybe in college or something, or maybe in your place of business, you were working on something and it, it seemed like 20, 30 minutes went by, but then you looked up and it was like two and a half hours and you had this amazing piece of work product that was just mm -hmm. phenomenal, right? Yeah. That's a low level flow state. So it's exactly the kind of thing what we're talking about. Now, to answer the question as far as how to get there, um, it, it's, um, there's a great story that I like to tell. I don't think it's a true story, but it's a good story. So I tell it, um, about Michelangelo creating the statue of David. And the story goes that when he was done, they asked him, how did you create David out of this big chunk of marble? And he said, I didn't create David. David was already in there. I just had to remove the stuff that wasn't him. So mm -hmm. Accessing a flow cycle is very similar to that. It's not like we have to do this, do that. It's what we need to remove and get out of our way in order to access it. So, so what, okay, and again, I kind of feel like this is a little bit of that mindset. You know, it's like, 
uh, there are days when you know you know you're focused on things like day like a week before vacation or day before you know you just get so much done because you have to and you know you're in the zone so to speak but when you start talking about what you said how do we get into it like what is it we need to do to change our mind so we can get in the flow i'm, I'm not clear mm -hmm and steps to do that. Right. I think There's, we want this. <laughs> fl there, flow is a very personal experience. I will tell you that, that there are certain things that are going to be uh, pretty standard across the board. One is, to your point, removing the distractions. Uh, we are so distractible and distracted in, in our worlds today uh, with the amount of information overload, the constant bombardment, the constant interruption from you know, emails and text messages and the phone goes ding and we have like a Pavlovian relationship with it where, um, where we respond immediately. And all of these things are flow blockers. Um, not getting enough sleep is a flow blocker. So um, what actually ends up happening, especially in the case of reactive behavior with emails and uh, text messages, is that we're actually neurochemically addicted to these things. What happens is the phone makes a noise and, and we get excited about it. There's kind of a, if you think about it, there's like a low level excitement or something. What that is, is it's a dopamine hit. There's, there's about 60 something chemicals in the brain. Five ones really, dopamine is one of them. Dopamine is a focusing chemical and it's a pleasure chemical. So every time the phone goes ding, we get excited and it feels good. And that's why we like our Facebook likes and our Instagram comments and all these kinds of things because we're neurochemically addicted to it. Um, wow. So that's, that's what's happening in your brain. And is it like Pavlov's dogs, you know, the psychological thing where we're just trained to kind of like when these things ding, that's the distraction. So are you saying remove that, like remove the notifications, remove, I mean, how, how do you get to, again, give us some tactical things we can do? Right. Well, you know, I'm not an addiction specialist. Uh, so, so that might be a good conversation to have as well, because there is something to it. If, if you do this for the rest of the day, you're going to discover very quickly how neurochemically addicted you are to your phone. Turn off the noise for the SMS messages. All of a sudden, you'll notice how often you're going, well, you know, like checking and looking. Um, it's wow. statistically, it's going to be every seven minutes or less that you're checking your phone. And in order to access a flow state, you need about 20 minutes of focused time for that to start going. And every time you look at that phone, you restart that clock. So it keeps you out of a flow state. Do you, you know, I know on your email, this is what I find fascinating because even on our voicemail or something, you say that you don't check email to a schedule. I thought this was, is this part of how you keep in flow, which is a little woo woo. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we want to go in there. You and I have used that term before, but on your emails, you don't check your email to a schedule. Do you mind sharing how, how do you do that? And is that how you stay quote in the flow? Cause I, well, it, you. yeah, it's, it, it does it. There's a, there's a disclaimer at the bottom. That's actually quite humorous. It's very, cause you know, I, I work with a lot of lawyers. They have a lot of legal disclaimers. I have my own. And, um, and essentially what it says is like, look, I, I do not have that Pavlovian relationship with my, with my devices, you know? So if you're expecting an immediate response, probably not going to happen. So if it is something that's truly urgent and, and let's define urgent, right? Because, right. you know, I, I joke, my, my, my phone, my device is there for my convenience, not yours. Right. So, um, and, and so, so the, um, so I'll check it according to my schedule, according to the day. Now, maybe I might, there are a couple of tools that are really good. One of them is time blocking. You know, I have some clients that say, okay, I check email between 8.30 and 9, between 11.30 and 12, between 2 and 2.30, between 4.30 and 5. That's when I'm doing email. It's like email time. And that's the only time they do email. Now, that doesn't work for some people, right? So, um, so I have another client that uh, what she does is that she, she gives herself five times a day to check her email. She can check it whenever she wants, but five is the limit. And what this causes her to do is it makes her, you know, both of these things. Um, the, the idea is to be intentional about going and retrieving email as opposed to reactive, right? Because if you're intentional, you're focused, you're on point, um, then, then you are running your day instead of your day running you or your clients or your customers or your friends or family running you. Because if you let other people run your life, they will. And unfortunately, they kind of suck at it. So, um, so it's really important to maintain control over these things and, and to be intentional about it. 
because you're always training yourself. And if you're in that, it goes ding and I, and I fall to it, I'm training myself in the behaviors of being reactive. And because the brain is the way it is, how we do anything is how we do everything. You know, one of the other terms you used for today was that when we're in a, in a state of overwhelm, I think for so many of us, and you know, it's like, should we do this? What should we do here? It's like, should we call the clients that, you know, we know are all in a world of hurt. I mean, everybody's just in this state. It's not even shock and awe anymore. I think overwhelm is a great word. And, and then ambiguity. We don't know even in the next month what's going to happen. So what would be some suggestions you would have not to get in the flow? I mean, we know we should get more rest. We know we need to be sleeping more. You know, some people are, are telling me they can't get to sleep right now. I mean, their mind is just on overload. Like what are some sex suggestions you would have to get out of that state of over overwhelm or is that getting into the flow? Is there a difference? I'm not sure. Well, f flow is actually a cycle. Okay. It's, 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 um, we refer to it as a one thing, but it's actually a four part cycle. Uh, struggle is the first, is the first stage. And that's where the overwhelm and the stress and, and all of that is. The second phase is the release phase where we, we finally kind of go, oh, okay, fine. And we let it all go and go for a walk and get away. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a crucial part because that is when you actually can access uh, the third phase, which is the actual flow state. And then on the back end of that, there's a recovery phase. Recovery is necessary. This is a terrible analogy and unfortunately, it's pretty accurate. Flow is a lot like drinking. If I have one drink tonight, I can have another one tomorrow and I can have one drink the following night and one drink the following night. If I decide I'm going to have five drinks tonight, I am not going to be able to drink again for a while. Flow is the same way. So if you have like too much flow and you don't bake in that recovery time, it's going to take you so much longer to get back into it. So flow kind of has a dark side. You know, it's interesting on that because I, I've heard people talk about how you need to focus on something for like literally no more than 90 minutes and then go break and do something else, whether it's go skip and dance or listen to music. I mean, I, I have to admit, like for us, for me, um, I haven't been listening to music and I, I have been drinking, by the way, just so everybody knows it's like that is the five drinks a night. So I need to stop that. Um, but on top of that, I... I think I don't get away for 90 minutes and it's four or five hours later and you're just mentally exhausted and you still feel stressed out. So is that the key is just to make a break or are there other things we can do for that sense of like, it's never ending on getting things done right now because there's so much mm -hmm. to do or so many questions of what's the future hold. Well, that's, and yes to all of that. And, and, and the thing is that the, the first thing we need to do is stop advocating for the status quo and to make sure that we get ourselves out of that victim mentality. Here's what it sounds like. I have to because, right? I have to keep going. I have to keep working. I have to stay online. I have to do this. I have to, have to, have to, have to is victim mentality. And if we're committed to being in victim mentality, then we are committing to stay out of a place of empowerment. And unfortunately, until you get into a place of empowerment, you can affect nothing. So, Right. Um, now in terms of the 90 minutes, you're absolutely right. Um, the, your advanced brain functions are up here. This is the prefrontal cortex. It's about the size of two walnuts. It's in the front of your brain. Okay. And we, we actually joke about this in the business. You know, if we're having a, an important meeting, we say, okay, bring your walnuts. Right. So, um, right. So you got two walnuts right here and, and that's where that's you at your best self. That's, that's your best thinking brain and all this kind of stuff. Um, now the prefrontal cortex is good for about 90 minutes. And after that, it's done. It's like, you know what? That's it. I need a break. So if you keep pushing through 90 minutes to two hours, two and a half hours, you are energetically tremendously inefficient. It's what I call getting really bad gas mileage at that point. And you're actually not thinking very well anyway. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually true in the long term as well. These people that work 60 hours of week, uh, 60 hours of, work, uh, of a week, they're only getting about 47 hours done. You're getting a one to three ratio on the back end of that. So if you're working more than 50 hours, cap it right there because you're already losing. So, um, so it's that, but we got to remind ourselves, this is not helping me. Pushing past 90 minutes is actually not getting things done, even though I'm telling myself it is. It's a lie. Yeah, I, I love that. 
Oh, sorry. Go I, was, ahead. I was just going to say, I used to tell my employees that, that there's a point you hit where it's the law of diminishing returns. You know, like, I'm not going to give you a brownie button because you worked 12 hours yesterday because I probably really only got seven out of you. You know, you're, right. it's, you're, you're not, you're becoming less efficient the longer that you go. Right. Now, here's the interesting thing, and, and, um, and I don't want to get too geeked out here, but I'm going to for just a second. Um, so what happens is we used to tell the story that you know, like humans only use 10% of their brains, and if we used 100% of our brains, we'd be so much more brilliant and whatever. Mm -hmm. That's actually not the truth. What, what we've learned in a flow state is the, the, the fancy word for, for a part of the cycle is transient hypofrontality. So what that means is transient, meaning temporary, hypo, meaning less than, you know, hyper would be more than, hypo is less than, frontality referring to the prefrontal cortex. What happens in a flow cycle is transient hypofrontality, less of the thinking brain. This part of the brain actually goes offline a little bit. Um, and, and the amygdala, which is responsible for fight, flight, that thing, that doesn't all lit up. And then this other, other parts of the brain sitting up. Now, this is why um, the flow cycle, you can tell it has some signature things. Number one, we mentioned earlier, it, it seems like 20 minutes went by and it, it was actually like two and a half hours. Time dilation, this happens in car accidents too. Time dilation happens because the, your ability to track time is housed where? In the prefrontal mm -hmm. cortex, right? Your sense of ego, your sense of self also goes away. There's no I in a flow state. You know, there's only the thing that you're connected to. Again, terrible analogy, same with a car accident. You're hyper-connected to that moment. So this is, um, and, 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 and this is how we, we get out of our own way, right? If the, the simple act of trying to get into flow, like I am trying to do this, will actually keep you out of it because there's a whole I am thing there, right? So it's about being totally connected and focused, a thing that you are present with, right? The deep now, 14 seconds, that's it. That's, that's the deep now. Um, but if you can get connected to that, flow is the result more than it is the goal, if that makes sense. Um, you're kind of like, woo, I'm going over my head, which is good because I mean, it's making me think, but that's just me on the simpleton here. And I want to make sure for, you know, for, for all of you, know, you ladies that are on here, it's like, if anybody has a question, you want to put it in chat because some of you want to be seen, some of you don't, but put, put a question in chat and it's like, I'll have Patty read it because my eyeballs can't read it when it's such a small type. And I would love to kind of see what questions you have for Chris, but I know for me, I'm, I'm wondering with this whole state of overwhelm right now, besides the tactical things we can do, Chris, how did you, how did you get to be so knowledgeable on all this? Because I know you have quite a diverse um, and let's just say amazing background, but do you mind sharing? Because this sounds like you're almost like a mad scientist in a good way, if I can say that, even though I, I entertain all the time. So, uh, right. Well, I, 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 I am. I, I am something of a mad scientist. Um, I, I'll, I'll try and do this as succinctly as possible. Um, you know, the first is that I was, a, you know, I, I had a, you know, dealt, I would say I'd had a dysfunctional childhood, but that implies there's another kind, right? So, um, <laughs> uh, no, but I, 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 I skateboarded when I was a kid. I was a BMX uh, bike rider and all this stuff. And th that was my earlier experience uh, with flow. And, and it's actually easier for younger kids to get into flow because the prefrontal cortex doesn't actually exist in kids. It doesn't show up until you're about 25 years old. So the prefrontal cortex doesn't need to go offline. You, you just don't have it, right? So what, as I grew up and got older, I started learning some language around, um, my, around the experiences that I had. Um, I, I, I have a master's degree in spiritual psychology and I, and I worked in the neuroscience institute of a hospital for a few years. I wasn't clinical. I worked in the marketing and PR department, but I was doing all the presentations with the physicians. And so I got an accidental education in neuroscience, neurobiology. Um, so, um, and, and then I, you know, one, it's kind of a one thing led to another, uh, kind of thing. But as the more, I, the more I learned about this stuff and the more I understood, the more I had language around, oh, that's what was happening when I was 10. That's what was going on when I was 17. Um, so, so now, as I, as I can relate my own experience to it, I have the language and the science behind it. Um, and, and so now, and, and we're still studying this. I'm, I'm collaborating with an organization, the, the Flow Research Collective, on, on this very thing on flow and how do, we, how do we leverage this? How do we access it? What, what more can we know about it? They have a whole team of people that are way smarter than me 
um, that, that are, that are on top of this. Wow. You know, uh, first of all, that's amazing. And every time I talk to you, it's like, I, I get crazy in my head, you know, of just the different things that our mind does and how our actions don't, don't follow that positively. Sometimes it change the mind, change your behavior, get better results, right? That whole kind of analogy. But I, one thing that, you know, with flow and overwhelm, cause those are today's topic. It's like, and I don't see anybody else have any questions yet, but I've got a ton of them on overwhelm. Are there different levels of overwhelm and strategies we can do? Like, for instance, I know for me on overwhelm, and it's not about me today, ladies, but if on an overwhelm level, when I get to a point that I can't control the next step, like right now in the world you know, environment we're in, none of us can control what's happening, right? So my state of overwhelm happens when it's like I can't control or change or shift. And maybe that's a mindset thing, but how how would you change that piece of it when it's like you feel like you have no control? We all have choices. I get that. But I know for some of us, that state of overwhelm can be different levels. And for a lot of women who own businesses, we're, we like to be in control. And right now we're not. None of us are. We're, we're at the behest of what's going to happen in the world economy. So what would it be the same steps or different? Well, I, I would say that, you know, and I had this conversation with a client when, when, you know, all this COVID-19 stuff fell out. She says, you know, I just, I just, I know, I just don't, you know, things are really weird right now. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And I quickly reminded her, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. So this is more about your, how you relate to the issue is the issue. So, you know, and, and really control is, largely an illusion and this depends on how you define it right everybody has kind of their own subjective relationship with control um, so really what you can control what you have complete dominion over is yourself and your responses and your reactions um, now here's and now I'll step away from, well this is kind of a blend of psych and neuro here but everybody has in their head an operating system just like a phone or a computer we call it a belief system that system was written by you by the time you were about six years old. So that system, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a chain here. The, the belief system gives birth to every thought you have. Those thoughts you then ex experience as feelings. And I break it down really easy. Mad, sad, glad, fear. That's it. It's in there somewhere. Mad, right? or, sad, you cut out. Mad, sad, glad. Mad, sad, glad, fear, shame. Okay. Whatever you're experiencing, you're going to fall into one of those categories or a combination of them. Even happiness is like a euphoric, uh, love is like a euphoric happiness, right? So you, the system gives birth to the thoughts, which you would then experience as feelings, which drive your actions, which produce results. Now, here's where it gets wonky. Those results are actually subconsciously designed ahead of time to validate and support the system that started it all. It's a cybernetic feedback loop. So you're going around and around and around. And so if you want a different result, you need a different chain with a different loop with it starts with a different system. So it's all boils down to self-awareness. How am I relating to this issue? What meaning am I creating? What am I experiencing? And you can reverse engineer it. What is the result that I would like here? What are the actions that I think are most likely to produce that result? What are the feelings I need to be feeling to drive those actions what would be the thoughts that I would be experiencing as those feelings and what theoretically is a system that would generate those thoughts. And you can compare those side by side with what is and what, sh what could be, and you can see the delta between those. Now, because that system in your head's been running since you were six, it doesn't exactly recode overnight, but that's why there's people like me around. <laughs> And I, I love that. Do you have, I mean, this is a, a kind of different question, but do you have any resources that are available on your website or that you'd like to share? Or how do you want people to know if they want to know more information for you? How do you want them to reach you? And yeah, you can go. I mean, you can certainly go to my God awful website, chrismking.com. Uh, Great. You know, there, it's a terrible website. I built it myself four times. I'm not doing that again. I got marketing people. They're going to do it. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, my Instagram feed is great. If you, if you like, like little sound bites or whatever, I get a lot, you know, the pseudo poetic one liners in a picture of me, that's what you're going to get. So, um, but I, I quite often get a lot of comments like that. Well, that was just the right thing in the right moment. I just caught that perfectly. So, well, I have to say, I've caught you in so many scenarios in a good way, caught you where somebody says something and you just, you, 
you can't help yourself. I mean, you just come out and say, well, this is, this is where the mindset is on that. Here's your flow, right? Or your woo. And it's like, I find it fascinating because we are, where most of us are our own worst enemies, you know, and again, the mind part of it. I know, I think, do we have a question, Patty, or is it a comment on from Mandy? I just can't read what it says. No? Just a comment. Just okay. a comment. She likes your questions. Oh, Mandy, that's why I love you. Just keep saying that. Say you love my questions. That's good. That's good. I um, do have a question since my face is on here. So, oh. <laughs> so Chris, um, you know, I, you're hearing a whole lot about people saying um, to, to maintain your um, sanity, mm -hmm. kind of control the input of information because, oh my gosh, I could, I could go from one channel to another to online reading to this to that. And, you know, it's just like, oh my God, I'm going to die, you know, type of thing. And, and yet there's also a, you know, there's the, um, you know, Oprah was calling it the joy of missing out as versus the fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. um, I, there is an anxiety sometimes that, that, that wells up in me mm -hmm. when I haven't heard anything all day, you know, when mm -hmm. I resisted turning on the TV or, or reading yeah. my, my online stuff. So mm -hmm. what, where's the balance there? And, and are there people like me that, that start getting anxious when they haven't tapped into that info? Uh, yes. And again, the, there's a lot of neurochemical addiction on there. Um, I, I, as Michelle mentioned, I've, I've had a kind of an interesting professional trajectory and I spent 12 years as a professional AM FM radio broadcaster. And I will tell you that the news is only 20% designed to inform you and 80% designed to affect you. So, because they want to keep you listening, they want to keep you engaged. Why? Because it's money and control and all this kind of stuff, right? So again, this boils down to being intentional. You know the information you need. You know the sources that you want to get it from. Go and get the information. It'll take you no more than 15 minutes to get what you need, and you can do it whenever you decide you want to get it. And then pull the ripcord. Get out of there before it starts to affect you. Nothing, especially at this stage as the dust is kind of settling, not much is going to change between noon and six. You know, it's, you know, they, they say the breaking news and I'm like, I actually saw that at 6 a.m. and it's 6 p.m., <laughs> right? You know, so, um, so it's about being intentional about it. Um, the thing about the fear and anxiety it's actually something you can leverage. Um, now, my experience particularly with, with um, I, w I wonder if it's more now that I track it back, um, it might be a little more with, with women than men, but um, we typically don't want to feel that kind of experience. It's uncomfortable, the fear, anxiety kind of thing. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll spend a lot of energy holding it back and trying not to experience that. Well, that takes energy and it's exhausting. And so what we can do is let, the, um, let that come through. Let the fear come through, experience the fear. Uh, now, here's the really cool part. Fear is driven by, there's a chemical in the brain called norepinephrine. That's the chemical that's, that's churning a lot in your brain when you're, when you're feeling fear and anxiety. It's a focusing chemical. It's designed to keep you frosty and make you pay attention to whatever's going on. Fear is, uh, this, uh, anxiety and excitement are actually the same thing in terms of neurochemistry. Because again, when you're feeling excited about something, you're really enthusiastic, it's the same chemical, norepinephrine is being driven. So what you can say, when, particularly when you're in a fearful, anxious place, and, and Patty, to your point about, or maybe it was Michelle about Oprah, the thing, uh, about joy, if you envision like the thing that you really want, the thing that you're really excited about, the things that, that bring you joy, that bring you love, and say, three, especially out loud, I, I am excited, I am excited, all that fear and anxiety, the polarity shifts into excitement and enthusiasm because your brain is already running a chemical for it. I love that. I love that. I mean, this is, to me, you know, it's kind of like, and I'm going to go back, Chris, because these are long, long, long time ago. I don't think any of you on here are this old to think about, but, you know, Anthony Robbins used to always say, you know, to break a habit, you've got to break your behavior, right? To be able to do something different. And I think right now for all of us, how do we how do we recognize when that happens? I think that's the challenge is so many of us with overwhelm or you, you know, the finding the flow is that we don't recognize when we're at that state. We just know we're in a state of 
let's say dysfunction or overwhelm or we're not getting shit done. Excuse me. I know we're on a call, but you know, we just aren't getting shit done and we don't recognize it and we get all up, you know, there. How can we break that? How, how can we recognize it? Well, that, that is the first thing is you, you be, women are really good at this because they're attuned to their feet. Um, so, you know, most of the time when you are feeling whatever, whatever adjective you want to get, I'm feeling frazzled. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling pulled in all different directions. I'm, you know, just not feeling good, right? Whatever that means to you, you know, yeah. these things, right? So that's for, um, you know, if, if you're tired or, or, or you're like, oh, I'm just, I'm so exhausted. Maybe you've been operating at that frequency, you know, get a little woo here uh, for, for the last hour and a half or something. So it is about the first thing is number one, be aware that it's happening to you. And then number two, it's, um, well, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. I mean, we, I mean, de-risking is one of them. Like, how do we, how do we remove all of the, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? We can de-risk all of that. What's the likelihood of that happening? Um, but honestly, the thing I think that that's really easy is bring yourself to the now, right? What is actually happening right now? Um, if you want, I'll give you, this is, this is kind of a Chris King original, but I have a five step uh, process that takes about 20 seconds to do it. And it instantly settles you down and instantly brings you back, kind of brings you back home. Um, and it's what, what I like to call the forget process. Forget? It's, uh, forget. Like forget. forget about it. Now, okay. if you put the emphasis, if you put the emphasis on a different syllable, it's fuck it. Um, but <laughs> I like that one. We'll so let me spell one. it for you. Forget. It's it's P H G I T, and it's recognizing is this a problem, right? Whatever problem you're having, or is it a puzzle? Most of the stuff that we have in our first world uh, lives are puzzles, you know, being, being homeless is a problem. Uh, you know, cancer is a problem. Drug addiction is a problem. What we're dealing with are puzzles and puzzles have solutions and can even be fun. Um, you know, puzzles are to the mind, what working out is to the body. It makes us sharper. It makes us, makes us more creative. So, um, so by, by framing it that way, this is a puzzle more than it is a problem. It takes a lot of the weight out of it. Hmm. Um, I like the H, that. Right? So right there, it takes a lot of the heaviness out of it. Um, H, happening. What is actually happening right now? Not what already happened, not what might happen. What is currently happening, right? This is very focus on the step you're in kind of thing. Um, G, gratitude. What can we be grateful for in this situation? Gratitude always makes things better. I, what are your intentions? What is it you want to manifest? What is it you're trying to accomplish? What's the, what's the goal here? And then T, what are the thoughts that you need to be thinking that align with that intention, right? Because if we're thinking about, oh, you know, I, I really need to get more business and you're thinking, oh, I screwed up. I'm a terrible businesswoman. Well, that, that's not really aligned, is it, right? Mm -hmm. So we got we to gotta take some responsibility for what's going on in here, right? Because yeah. you do have control over what's going on in here. Do you, right now, do you find a lot, because I know you work with a lot of women, which is one of the reasons I know we were excited to have you part of Connected Women of Influence, and also got to recognize you're a past Suits Pop presenter and dedicated dude, you know, that's a title that many men love right now in CWI, but for you, how did you, I mean, why is it, why women, I guess, for you, is it just that there's just more help and assistance or do men go through the same thing on this whole flow and overwhelm or is it different for genders? I'm curious. Well, it's, um, I mean, the reason why is it's sort of the way it happened. It wasn't, I didn't set out, you know, intending that, um, you know, historically my friends have tended to be female. My, my circles of influence have tended to be females. I just, I just, get women, they get me. We just, I'm kind of wired like one, you know, I mean, as you can tell, uh, you know, men will talk about, oh, women talk all the time. You can tell word economy is not a gift I naturally possess, so I can talk all day. Yeah. Um, so, but it's just kind of the way that it sort of unfolded. Um, and, and it also, as I realized that, I was like, that makes a lot of sense to me because I do think we do need more women in charge of companies and countries and and organizations and teams. And, and I should probably say, more, well, I, I should say more feminine energy, right? I don't think like the Hillary Clinton. Oh, I think I almost lost you. Well, we're just going to keep going on. Come back to us, Chris, come back. What do you think, Patty? Is he coming back? 
I don't know. We got Carly on yes. the call. He's it's like, you know, yeah, he'll come back. Ben so, typically. There you are. Oh, Talk did you. Break up? We yeah. lost oh, okay. you for a minute. Oh, I'm back. Good to be back. So um, you were talking about just the feminine energy, and then we kind of you 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 froze. Yeah, so feminine. Well, I, I think we I think we do need more of that feminine nurturing energy guiding us. Um, you know, now men typically come to me because they're looking for more success. They're they're looking to quote unquote take it to the next level. They rarely know what that means. They don't have a clear definition of it. Uh, women tend to come to me for more relief. So they're overwhelmed. They're burned out. They're kind of pissed off at their husbands. I mean, that's sort of the way that goes. And so, so they're looking for different things. Um, ultimately, I think what, what's happening is that women tend to be last, dead last on their priority list, whereas men typically rank in the top three somewhere uh, <laughs> most of the time, right? You know, right. for women, it's, it's everything else. It's, it's the job and her kids and her husband and the house and her mom and just like every, she's getting leftovers of her own life and she's advocating for that. I have to because here's all the reasons, right? And so, you know, my intention is to make sure that these women and that are, they're making, they're running their organizations and their lives instead of their organizations and lives running them. We, we gotta flip that upside down so that they can actually get where they want to go and enjoy, you know, get more of them in their world. I love it. And if any of you all have any other questions to ask Chris, we're going to be wrapping up here in a few minutes, but I love the forget, <laughs> you know, and Patty, I know you're putting it in there. Thank you for that gem. Cause I'm, I'm not kidding. I've not heard that before, you know, about these P H C I T. What did P stand for? Puzzle. Puzzle and puzzle instead of problem. Okay. We got the rest. It does give it a perspective because a public puzzle is like, you know, you can strategically you, look Patty. at it and hmm? right. As opposed to the problem, which is I got to solve it, you know, there's oh, yeah, things that are, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, the problem focus, even saying puzzle, we associate with solution. Okay, cool. What else you got? What other gems do you have for us? Because I think we're eating it up. Am I right? Like, <laughs> like looks like everybody's like nodding. But if anybody has any other questions, because I'm like, you know, with, with the state of where we are right now, you know, everybody, this is what I've noticed is that anybody I'm talking to every day, we're, we're putting on the happy face, right? It's like, I know, I know we're going to get through this. We're talking about this whole better together. You know, we're all in this together. I mean, I'm, I'm watching members in our community that are making, you know, face masks. I mean, actually the sewers and the designers that are part of our association are making masks. I've heard some of our members are volunteering, you know, that's going to help us feel like we're doing something. But, you know, in this situation where we're at home and it's like there's nothing we can do except stay at home and do stuff. Are there some tactical things that you would recommend that we do to not be in that state of overwhelm? You know, we're in our house. How much can you do in your house? Like for me, it used to be I would love to get together with people and kibitz and have a glass of wine or mini glasses, whatever, at a restaurant or a bar. And we can't do that. We can't get together as people, you know, Zoom only allows us to do so much. And I'm just curious from your perspective, you know, we're in this home environment and we're in the home environment all the time. Like what else can we do to get out of that state, you know, of overwhelm? Well, I think, you know, f focusing on the step you're in, right? Bringing yourself, whenever you're overwhelmed, it means you got too much stuff orbiting you and way too much in your head at one time. So strip it away. What do I need to be focusing on right now? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, I, and I really encourage people to, and, and what they say in the military is that, you know, things are going to suck. Embrace the suck, you know. There's a quote. All right. I, that's what they say in the military. Embrace the suck because, because struggle and progress are, are in a relationship together. You don't get progress without the struggle. So honor where you're at. It's okay to say, yeah, you know what? this is shitty, I don't like it, or it sucks, or whatever it is, and you also don't have to live in that space, it's like, okay, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow myself the dignity of my experience, I'm gonna allow myself the feelings, because to, to, to deny that is not psychologically healthy anyway, right? Mm -hmm. And okay, now, now that I've allowed that energy to sort of move through, maybe I can go for a walk, you know, disrupt the environment, get outside, you know, sunshine, vitamin D, all that's good for you. Um, I, I do think if, if you're not feeling like, oh my gosh, another zoom call, are you kidding me right now? Then don't do it. Right. You know, honor your boundaries. Um, I will say this much too, as a point of encouragement. And then I actually have a question of my own. Um, 
that, that right now is an incredible opportunity um, in, terms of, in terms of flow. There, there's actually flow triggers. There are 22 flow triggers that we know of right now. Um, autonomy is one of them. Complexity is another one. Uh, deep embodiment is another one. The, and, and this is all happening right now. Novelty is another one. We have novelty, we have complexity, we have autonomy because we're working at home. These are all flow triggers. So if we can recognize that, that the suck is akin to the, the pulling back of a bow and arrow, right? It strains and it stresses and it's, really, and it's really tight and it's hard. And when it's time to release, that arrow goes high and far. So this is that time of the pulling back on the bow where it does suck and there is something on the back end if we get our mindsets right and if we position ourselves to do that. So um, this is the time that innovation happens. Fortunes are made in down economies. This is when yeah. people make a ton of money. Um, the the, um, the, the dot-com bus, for example, AOL became the 800 pound gorilla after the ISP wars. Uh, so this, this is a really good time. And, Four weeks ago, so much of what we're doing today, people would have said, here's all the reasons why we can't do that in an organization. You know, it would have been impossible or even unimaginable. And the second we decided it was necessary, we made things happen. So yeah. what, what are, I look for where are you limiting yourself? Where are you looking for your limitations? And where can you maybe challenge that and say, what if I'm wrong? What if there is a way? What might be? And allow yourself to play in that space of what if. Even if it sounds ridiculous or absurd, let it be ridiculous and absurd. Go stretch way beyond what you would actually do, and you'll naturally dial it back. But it disrupts the patterns, and it breaks, and it breaks the doors down. I think that's genius. Only, you know, because of the fact that so many people are just, you know, there was shock and awe. And then, you know, the whole thing where we can't get together as people and, and converge together. I mean, that's what we do, right? And like, I know Mandy, it's like you're the, in the event industry, you do events. That's like what may, I mean, I'm going to just give props to Mandy for a minute because, you know, she's a DJ. And so hers is all about in-person events, yet she's shifted and pivoted. Um, and what she's doing is doing virtual kind of dance parties. I mean, how different is that? And who would ever thought that was a thing? I thought that was awesome. I'm seeing other members that they're actually now comfortable doing kind of short, you know, small group Zoom meetings where it's not as ideal, but people are having small group happy hours together. I know we're doing that, you know, for our community and people are just, you know, have been just shift away from the idea that we're in, in with people. But as we get through these months, I can see already that the, the mind is starting to be fried with the idea that this whole virus, you know, situation might be going on past even April. And, and I know that's what, to me, is the unknown is the hardest part. So talk about the unknown. I know there's probably a, a methodology you have for that because the overwhelm is one, but it's the unknown where how do we find our flow there, right? I know logically my head is saying I can't control this, right? Which for me, it's about control. Number two is I still can't control it. It's unknown to me and we live in that world. What would you suggest in that case to change our, our crazy brains? Well, I, I think this, this is great training ground. Um, you know, the Navy SEALs will tell you that people don't rise to the occasion. They sink to the level of their training. And, um, and this is great training ground because the reality is, you know, like I said before, we have just, you know, everybody says, oh, these are such uncertain times. Like every time is an uncertain time. There's no difference right now. You're, mm -hmm. You have been confronted with the reality of uncertainty and you are not prepared for it because you've been living in the illusion that, oh, this is going to happen, you know, and every day people are shocked by reality that they weren't expected. You know, maybe somebody, you know, God forbid, leaves the house in the morning and does not make it back that night, you know, and these are, but we live under that illusion because we need to create that sense of safety. So the trick here is get, get comfortable with uncertainty because it's every day, right? right? So that doesn't mean we need to live in threat response. That doesn't mean we need to be freaked out. It means we need to acknowledge that we don't actually know what's going to happen the more you recognize and get comfortable with the truth that you don't know what's about to happen, the more you can be empowered to do your part to create and make happen to the best of your 
answer of what you want instead of just expecting it. I love that. I have to give props to my brother-in-law because my brother-in-law has said, I don't know everything, but I know stuff. And it's like, I always go, okay, I don't know everything. I don't have control over everything, but I know stuff, right? And that has worked. But I think just in the overwhelm right now, it's like, it's so stressful. Um, I'm going to throw something on you. You didn't know I'm going to ask this, but how are you, you know, for you and your business right now, because you work, you know, in person with people, is everything on Zoom for, or online for you and digital? And how have you adapted and how have you shifted? Because from what I know about you, Crystal, like you were all over Southern California and you do business all over. So how have you shifted and pivoted and kind of like, you know, found your flow, if I can ask? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and, and this is going to be one of those, oh, see, this, it's easy for him to say, and here's why. Um, <laughs> you know, because I, I, I would, I was, I was, you're right, I was everywhere from Westlake Village to San Diego, all, you know, Pasadena, all over Southern California. Well, now I'm nationwide. Uh, you know, I was at a networking meeting in Chicago this morning, and about a half an hour later, I was a networking meeting in Seattle, right? You know, so it's... Um, I like that. So it's actually, but again... This was all predicated with a mindset of, okay, what can I do with this? Where can I go from here? And I'm already getting traction in Chicago. I'm already getting traction in other markets. Now, a lot of my work was done online as, with my one-on-one -on -one clients. So, you know, Zoom, go to meeting, whatever. Uh, now, even the team engagements, you know, I have a cosmetics company uh, that I'm working with a leadership team of eight people there. And so it's all online and it's, it's worked really well. So, um, you know, speaking engagements are obviously a, a little uh, a little different and right now non-existent. But most of even the speaking engagements that I had lined up for uh, through May have said, "Hey, you know, first they put a pause, they said we're canceling, and then they called me back and said we're not doing it online. Can you do that?" Absolutely. So, um, yeah. so the the thing for me is I miss the gym, and um, and I will be very uh, very candid with you in that I spent a week in a mental shit show going, this sucks. I don't like it. How am I going to work out? I can't do this. I can't do that. It's not going to be as good, blah, blah, blah. And then after about a week of that, I went, okay, I can keep saying that, or I can see what I can do. And I had a couple of days of poker workout and then my brain just clicked and I went, you know what? I'm going to crush it today. I don't know how I'm going to crush it today, but I'm going to crush it today. And the last four workouts have been awesome. And I tell you what, by embracing the suck and because it created novelty and because I was focused on it with an intention, the overwhelm was gone, the negative attitude was gone, and I have actually been refreshed in my workout. I am more excited to work out now than I was when I was at the gym. Now, when I get back to the gym, it's going to be even better. That's what I mean. This is the pulling back of the bow if you embrace it. I like how you said mental I like how you said mental shit show. I'm going to have to steal that one. <laughs> I like embrace the suck. That one I'm yeah. going with. It's like, right? Chris, you should like trademark that. Embrace the suck. I think, I think the military owns the rights on that one. I, I, I tell you, but here's the weird thing and, and what I would invite uh, anyone to consider is that so much of what we talk about in terms of flow is very masculine, right? It's the X Games. It's the Olympics. It's, it's the Navy SEALs. It's, you know, all of this stuff. And I wonder what it looks like through the feminine lens. You know, I was like, well, is childbirth, does that produce a flow state? I mean, maybe there's too much pain. I don't know. Um, because there, there's actually a ratio, of what we call a challenge skills balance that needs to be at a certain spot in order to access a flow state. So I'm wondering what it looks like specifically through the, the feminine lens. Because in the 70s, a guy by the name of Chick Set Me High started studying this. And he wrote a book called Flow. And he talked to everybody. I mean, he talked to surfers, he talked to business people, he talked to Tibetan monks and underwater basket weavers. I mean, he talked to everybody. And it turns out that flow is for anybody. Anybody can get there in their way. And, and the great thing about it is that it is, it is the number one most autotelic experience in the human condition. Um, and we hey say guys. autotelic. Oh. Oh, uh, go ahead, Mandy. So yeah, sorry. Go I was going to ask a question. I've been trying to jump in, but I haven't wanted to interrupt. So go ahead. Finish don't your interrupt me. No, if you don't interrupt me, I'll just keep going. <laughs> you have to interrupt me. No. Okay. So you've kind of already addressed this, but my question, first of all, thank you, Michelle, for the shout out. That was really sweet. Um, 
I'm in a state of, like you were saying with the down economy and stuff, that's the time for ideas and all this new stuff. So I'm like, I find myself torn between like, oh my gosh, I got to hurry up, come up with new ideas. And I have them, but like, I'm having that kind of almost FOMO, if you will, like I need to hurry up before somebody else does it. But then on the other side of things, trying to be like, okay, calm down. You need to also take this time to like relax and like, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like kind of that torn between the two. Maybe. So any time. <laughs> I'm totally with you there. I mean, it's like everybody's scrambling to try to do stuff. And, and Chris, I know you'll have some opinion on it, but I think, you know, nothing's, nothing's that different that we can create right now. It's a matter of what's going to be right for your business. You know what I mean? Like we came up True. with happier hours, right? There's a ton of people doing happier hours. Yeah. Right? Well, well, ours are happier, but other people are just happy. So well, that's and maybe, the only difference. Yeah. And maybe it's, maybe that's a bad example. Not that I need to come up with an idea before someone else does, but like, for example, like boning up on my DJing and remixing skills and all that. And it's like, I find myself almost panicking. Like I need to hurry up and do this while I have this time. But then like, well, hold on, we've got a few weeks and like, I don't know. Does that make any sense? <laughs> no, it, it goes back to what Michelle said about like the unknow, unknowing. It's like, is this the new normal and we need to pivot and adjust our whole style or yeah. is this temporary? And like you said, we're just like, okay, let's fill the time with like bettering ourselves, you know, fine tuning things. Or is yeah. this just where we're reconstructing how we do business? And that's yeah. like, so the unknowing is I think Michelle's talking about is which way, which way do you go? You know that's a good I mean? point. Yeah. Under quality yeah. control? Or are you under re- <laughs> structuring everything, you know? For yeah, that's true. I don't know. Yeah. Anybody else? Out? Chris, you got a comment on that one? Well, my answer to that is in the way that she's framing it, actually, because she has it framed as competing intentions. Is it mm -hmm. this or is it that? And, and the way that she's holding it, the, the way that I'm understanding the way she's holding it is that this is one thing and this is the other thing, and these things are diametrically opposed. Now, what if they're not? Yeah, if they're not diametrically opposed because if, if, if they are diametrically, diametrically opposed or if you're holding them as diametrically opposed, what you have is competing intentions. And yeah. when you have competing intentions, the status quo tends to remain. So what if you're wrong? What if these things are not diametrically opposed? What if there's a way to relax and have the fire under your ass to, to get things done at the same exactly. time? What would yeah. that look like? What might gotcha. be a way that that looks, you know? Gotcha. Um, it's very much of, of work and flow is playing in the intersections. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the exercises we do is you write a list of 25 things that pique your curiosity, that you like, that you're interested in. And, you know, for me, they're going to be all over the map. I'm interested in ancient civilizations. I'm interested in uh, transatlantic liners of the, late, of the early 1900s. I'm interested in drums. And so then the question is, where do those things intersect? <clears throat> and you start playing in the intersections and this opens up all kinds of doors. So I would recommend that Mandy says, okay, where do these di seemingly diametrically opposed things intersect? Where are they be actually quite similar or aligned? Cool. Okay. Thank you. I like that. I give you some good ideas. Cause I know you are, I mean, you are such a creative Mandy from knowing you. And it's like, I think, I, I, I hate that fear of missing out because that causes stress and angst. Yeah. And, you know, I've been feeling that too. So I don't think you're alone on that one, but um, we only have a couple more minutes and, you know, Chris, I want to say thank you to you for, you know, just being authentic and not being, you know, like I know at all. Cause you know, you, you know, stuff. <laughs> I know some stuff and I have some experiences. Um, exactly. And we're all going through. I, I don't have all the answers. That's not, that's not my job. <laughs> right. Right. And so we just own that. I love that. But does anybody else have any final questions or anything like that before we hop off and say bye-bye? Because I really appreciate everybody coming. Everybody's looking. No, missing once, missing twice. Okay. Well, um, if, there, if there is anything, feel free to reach out. You know, they can get me, you know, Chris mking.com. You can get Chris Mike King on Instagram. I'm happy to have a conversation. And it's chrismking.com, correct? Yes, that is correct. If you forget the M, you're going to get a very uh, uh, nasty email from a cantankerous guy in Portland. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, ladies, thank you for being on here. I love when I see all of you and it's like, you know, you're going to see more of these. Um, we are having our coffee connections tomorrow morning. If any, you want to join from 
10, I believe, no, 9 to 10.30. So it's on our website on the event calendar. And Chris, thank you for this. I think we'll be doing more. Um, Patty, thanks for getting all this worked out and for being the champion that you are in CWI. And I believe we are finished. So thank you so much. Again, Chris, you're Bye. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. I appreciate it. Bye, everybody.